Hey guys, what's up? Welcome to the channel. My name's Jared. Today we're going to be continuing working on the 180 because we have some sway bars to put in. Following on from the last episode where we had the subframe out and we replaced all the bushings and the arms and hubs. If you didn't watch that video, go back and check it out. But in today we're going to be changing the sway bars on the front and rear of the 180. So what I picked up here is a front and a rear sway bar kit for the car from white line and this is the part number for the front one which comes with this mounting hardware kit and this is the rear one and that's the part number for that and it comes with this kit here what i've noticed is in their new kits um, the end links have uh, changed in their design they're no longer the turnbuckle adjustable style and they've gone to, I don't know, where you, like an eyelet style. So why do you want to change your sway bar? Well, essentially, when you put grippier tires on the car and you lower it and you create a lot more grip, there's going to be a lot more body roll or inertia that transfers through the car. And to counteract that body roll and to keep the suspension in the correct geometry and the tire on the ground, then installing a thicker or upgraded sway bar is going to assist with that. Also what I've noticed personally is when you throw a bigger sway bar on as well, it increases the feedback or the sensitivity of the steering uh, when you put any inputs in. One of the ways that these aftermarket sway bars are better than the original ones, they come with these holes which allow for greater adjustment. If you put the end link in the hole closer to the bar, it's going to stiffen the suspension up and if you put it further away, it's going to soften it. So you have more adjustability in this bar. As you can see here, I've got the factory one out. You can see how much thicker the aftermarket one is compared to the original one. Sometimes what you find as well is the OEM ones are hollow and the aftermarket ones are solid steel. So one downside to this upgrade is it adds more weight to your car because this is a solid steel bar which is much heavier and thicker than the original one. Here you can see the end link. There's no settings for adjustment compared to the aftermarket one and you can see the angle on this is slightly different. So I assume these end links are gonna adapt for that. Often you'll notice also that the bushes for mounting the sway bar are worn out. But I gotta say for being 35 years old, these bushes look in pretty good condition. These ones, not as great, but they're probably not the worst that I've seen. With installing the rear, now with the new design, there's a couple of different installation methods depending on the set for your car. So for the rear, our setup looks something like this, which is this third one. We've got the eye pin type link. And essentially, I've just mocked it up how it's supposed to look. And we've got the bolt with the small washer on one side of the sway bar. Then the end link, the large washer and the nylock nut. And at the bottom, you're going to have your two locking nuts at the top here, followed by one of these cone washers. These washers are tapered like this. And as you can see on the bush, there's also a taper. So you need to make sure that the tapered part goes underneath the bush like this. So you'll have them looking like this and the actual lower control arm mounted in the middle here like this. So that'll just be replicated on the other side of the arm. For removing the rear sway bar, I'd already done it in the previous episode, but essentially there's two bolts that mount here and two that mount on here and a nut just on the end, sandwiching this onto the lower control arm. Before we put the sway bar in the car, we need to put on these mounts. And I've just got the old bar next to the new bar just so I can set them roughly where they're going to go. And before we put them on the bar, we're going to put some grease inside the bush. Because what will happen is if we don't, there might be some squeaking as the bar rotates. So just lining up where the old bar went, we're going to put a bit of grease inside that bush. Like 
it up. It's worth noting these bushes here are polyurethane, so they are upgraded over the standard rubber. So there's going to be less flex. And another thing I notice is on this kit, uh, they don't come with upgraded saddles for the sway bar. You have to reuse the original ones. You want to leave these bottom nuts loose for now, so that will allow us to get the other side in and set the preload first. So just going to go ahead and repeat it for the end link on the other side. So what I've done here is I've got a jack under the lower control arm on both sides and this is to simulate the car sitting at ride height because now we want to go ahead and set the preload on this adjustable threaded rod here what can happen is if we set it too aggressively it's going to make the suspension quite unstable or give us too much feedback when driving so we want to set it neutral so that it only starts to load up when we get into the corner so now what we're going to go ahead and do is just tighten up these till they're just tight. You can see they're loose still. So we want to go up there and make them tight and maybe give it two turns with the spanner. So they're locked up. And then we want to go ahead and do up our locking nut on the top. So when you do up this top one, you want to make sure you get a little bit of squish out of the bush. You don't want to leave it loose because what will happen is when the car is driving, it will move up and down on that bush. Then you can go ahead and tighten up the bottom locking nut and do the same process for the other side. The front is very similar to the back. We got the one end link here going into the front lower control arm. You just need to remove the bolt underneath here. And then we have the two bolts here, just on the end of the front caster support arm. the front bar compared to the old bar it's not as big as I thought it's not much of an upgrade but this is a light car the front does have three settings though I'm gonna install it on the middle setting first to see then whether I want more sensitivity and go closer to the front one or a bit less sometimes when you go to the front one here you can get a bit more bump steer feedback through the steering wheel which you might not like so the middle one or the softer one might be preferred the front kit in this case came with some lubricant for these bushes so i'm going to use that one instead of my own one 
put inside there like so and then back on the same spot as before With this kit, they give you a bracket which goes in the factory hole for the sway bar. But as you can see, it doesn't want to sit flat because it's hitting on the bump stop and the caster arm. So we're going to need to make some clearance. The other thing I'm not too keen on is they've only got these two tacks to hold the bolt in and you can see through the tack to the other side. It's not a very strong join. So this is what the mount looks like after. We've just taken the corner off here and there and a little bit off the bottom. This kit for the front we're installing is like the bottom one with the double eye link and the bracket for mounting. So as you saw, that was the bracket and we got the double eye link here. So that goes in the lower control arm and then we got a bolt that goes through the bracket and then another bolt which goes into the sway bar. So bolt side has the washer and the nut side has the larger washer. Like this. If you're struggling to line up the end link, as you can see here with it loose, you can actually push the sway bar on an angle. So you might be able to pull it so it straightens up and that'll help with the installation. So at the moment it's just left loose like that. We get our bolt, small washer, end link through the bracket and then large washer and nut and repeat that for top and bottom. Unlike the rear, there's no adjustability in the end link. So now you're just going to go ahead and tighten up the bolts on the top and the bottom there. I just put the sway bar in and I was noticing, oh, why is it so high? Like it's touching on the shield here and now the fan can't turn. And I think I've realized that I've got it uh, backwards. I've got to switch it around 180 degrees left to right. So this is pointing down and not up. All right, guys, that wraps up another video. Pretty happy with how the install turned out. Can say that these new kits from Whiteline, they don't look as good quality as before without the adjustable end links. And these new kits don't come with the lateral locks as standard so that's something extra you have to pay some of the other kits include them i think overall value for money they are a good option at the moment i can't quite drive the car because it's not registered yet but later on once i do drive it i'll have to give you a review of how the sway bar goes and what settings i ended up using on the front and the rear if this video was helpful give it a thumbs up if not i'll see you in the next video cheers